Good evening. Confirm if voice is audible. Okay. So we will be starting with uh, <clears throat> human resource management and organizational behavior MCQs. And uh, today we will be starting with the recent questions. First question which is from your 2021 exam. So uh, this is a question from management 2021. Arrange the team members' behavior in the group building process and in the proper sequence. A lot of competition, hostilities, upset, depressed. C eager, anxious, gather impression and data about similarities and differences among members. Interdependence in personal relations less dissatisfied and a feeling of belongingness to the group so you have to arrange chronologically for that uh, let's let's briefly revise the group building process the various steps under group building process so uh, what is group building process or what is group dynamics like group dynamics uh, is how a group is formed what is the structure of the group going to be who will be performing what kind of functions these are the essence to group building so uh, there are five major stages in group building which we are going to talk about it starts with the first stage in group building is your forming forming stage so uh, some of the typical characteristics in the forming stage the first stage as we see it is a scattered people in the group aren't aware that what is acceptable in the group then the next stage is the storming stage in storming stage largely the fight over is who will be the controlling the group in third stage which is norming stage is where the relationship the hierarchies are established and fourth stage is your performing stage here the group is fully functional and they will be performing the task at hand and last stage is your adjourning stage okay so let's briefly go through each of the group building stages forming stage first stage first stage is characterized by great deal of uncertainty every group member is in a different direction what is the group purpose structure leadership going to be members taste the waters to determine what type of behaviors are acceptable this stage is complete when members have begun to think themselves as part of the group so that's the first stage that is forming stage your stage two is your storming stage now storming stage what happens is characterized by intra-group conflict within the group there is a conflict the conflict is about who will control the group members accept the existence of group though this stage is complete when there is clarity over who is going to be the leader of the group so it started with first stage that was forming second stage we talked about is storming storming over leadership and the third stage now is your norming in norming stage what happens close relationship develop group demonstrates cohesiveness so what is acceptable in the group what is the group norms going to be group norms solidifies here so in norming stage is complete when the group structure solidifies group has assimilated a 
common set of expectation what is the correct or acceptable member behavior in the group is being notified yeah then the next stage is your performing stage from performing stage is the fourth stage at this point the structure is fully functional and accepted group energy uh, has moved from getting to know and understand each other permanent group develops the purpose for which the group was formed here the task is performed that is the performing stage and the last stage under group building is adjoining so for permanent group you can see the fourth stage is the last stage in the development however for temporary committees task uh, team task forces similar groups that have limited tasks to perform the adjoining stage is basically wrapping up activities and preparing to disband some group members are upbeat basking in the group accomplishment others feel may feel depressed over the loss of comrade friendship gained during the work group life so sometimes it happens that we celebrate project success the purpose for which group was built at the times we feel that okay this this project is over and we feel depressed about it so these are the stages now one basic question which had come earlier in the exam which says the stage which relates to development of decision making abilities interpersonal and technical competencies this is your this is your storming stage okay in storming stage what did we discuss storming stage the idea is who is going to be the leader so the leader will be based on abilities interpersonal and technical competencies the leadership is established so this is your storming stage storming stage was your second stage remember the hierarchy as it is it started with your forming yeah It's a repeated concept, so important to revise. Forming stage, the, the first stage where group members were tasting waters. Then the second stage is your storming stage, storming fight over leadership. And third stage, your norming stage. Group members accept a kind of correct group member behavior. Performing stage. and the last one is your adjoining stage okay coming back to the question asked in recent examination so first one this is eager anxious gather impression and data about similarities that is in the first stage which is your forming stage group members exhibit this kind of behavior lot of competition hostilities this happens in the storming stage as we understand by now that storming stage is characterized by lot of competition competition conflict within the group that who is going to be leader then less satisfied and a feeling of belongingness that is your norming stage what is correct behavior members are just in the norming stage and interdependence in personal relation that's the performing stage where they are performing the task the dependent on the entire team to perform the task at hand and last stage which is adjoining stage some members may feel accomplished my while we talk that others may feel upset or depressed about the project while adjoining stage as they losing on 
friendship they're losing on good colleagues so now see please take a note that how the exam pattern has shifted in previous exam what they have asked they've just asked typical characteristics of the stages and you were expected to pick up one of these in the recent exam what they have done they have given the characteristics behavioral so uh, the focus is shifted more towards analytical please mark it so uh, another question which is from 2020 commerce paper okay so this is a very important concept you see year on year these concepts are repeated belief attitude traditions expectations which are shared by the group members this is your yes group norms group norms is the correct answer here okay moving on to next question this is this is from your organizational climate again a question from commerce 2020 exam or management 2020 i'm not sure on this so um, what is the question which of the following motives relevant for organizational climate there is a urge to be relevant and useful to large group including society as a whole your options are achievement climate affiliation climate and export influence climate and extension climate now what are these climates all about let's have a brief understanding of all of this before we come to answer of this question so uh, see here organizational climate can be bifurcated into these important motives starting with the first one when we say achievement climate achievement cli climate you can say is characterized by excellence it is how we achieve something affiliation is more of a uh, you can say friendship or personal relationship influence climate talks about making an impact on others control climate is regarding orderliness whereas when we say extension climate is a concern for others especially to large group or society as a whole rather then dependency climate which is the last of all these dependency climate talks about helping others in developing oneself so let's quickly go through each one of these first one achievement climate what it is achievement climate this motive is characterized by concern for excellence competition in terms of standards set by others for or by oneself setting challenging goals for oneself awareness of the obstacles that might be encountered and attempting to achieve these goals and persistent in trying alternative path to one's goal so achievement climate contribute to effectiveness satisfaction and a sense of internality it is more of a self concept next one is your affiliation as the name says affiliation is concerned for establishing maintaining close personal relationship emphasis on friendship and tendency to express one's emotions next one is your expert influence climate expert influence climate is concern for making an impact on others how do you influence a desire to make people do an urge to change the situation to develop the people influence climate you 
as an individual influencing others. Control climate, on the other hand, is concerned for orderliness. An urge to monitor events, take corrective actions when needed, and display personal power. Control climate talks about personal power. Extension climate. The second last one. Extension climate is characterized by concern for others, interest in subordinate goal, urge to be relevant and useful to large groups. That is, greater goal of organization is to contribute to both society. That is what in the question asked that there's an urge to be useful to the large group including the society we'll come to question uh, before let's do dependency climate dependency climate is desire to help others in developing oneself an association with people having higher knowledge and higher status tendency for subordination and approval from higher ups so Question was particularly regarding an urge to be relevant and useful to large groups, including society as a whole. That is your extension climate. Let's go back to extension climate. Extension climate talks about interest in uh, subordinate goal, urge to be relevant and useful to large group, including society. Yeah. So these are deep concepts. Until and unless you know all these motives under organizational climate, you may not be able to answer this. Not frequently asked aspect though, but yes, you may expect in future from the spit again. Hope the meaning of these climate is clear. So far, so good. Any one of these, uh, if you want further explanation, just quickly let me know. Okay, let's move ahead. So, uh, okay, the answer have come though. So, uh, holistic, integrated, goal-oriented process of planning, recruiting, selecting, developing, managing, compensation, compensating employees. So, these are all your talent management. Well, the difference between talent management and HRM when we say HR, HR is more tactical or you can say HR is dealing with day-to-day -day management of people. You can take a note of this. HR is the administrative arm which is dealing with the day-to-day -day management of people. And when we say talent management, talent management is a long-term plan. Categorically, talent management has four pillars. Let's look at it. Key components of a talent management, recruitment, that is building a pool for hiring new talent, performance management, ensuring that employees are motivated, ensuring that they go through a critical review process as well, learning and development, training, coaching employees for their skill development, and retention keeping the talent within the organization developing a succession plan maybe for them so recruitment performance management learning and development retention these all are long-term aspects which which is strategically to be planned in the organization whereas human resource management is more of a administrative bit day-to-day -day operations yeah moving on which of the following performance management appraisal methods prevent supervisors from rating all or most employees satisfactory or high? Remember, we discussed the concept of bell curve. Generally, in an organization for performance appraisal, there is a bell curve fitment followed. By bell curve fitment, we mean that if you're rating, let's say, on a rating of a 1 to 5, 5 being highest. So there will be very few who are given 5 rating 
and there will be very few who are given a rating of one or a two yeah most people will get a rating of three or some maybe four right so question is which of these prevents supervisor from giving these satisfactory or high rating which which is such method where supervisors cannot follow this approach so the answer to this is forced distribution method what happens in forced distribution method see in forced distribution method uh, the rater is forced to rate among some predetermined parameters the criteria are fixed like there are only let's say 10 criteria and among that the rater is to pick up or there is only five criteria based on that it is the rater picks up so uh, general electric in 1980s during the era of jack welch this was formed so a uh, force distribution method what it says the force distribution method one of the most widely used and one of the most criticized method of performance appraisal this is a rating system that is used all over the world it requires supervisor to assess each employee on certain predetermined parameters and thereafter ranking them into three or more categories so like you rate the employees at good excellent or poor categories after detail assessment of these predetermined take a note of the parameters are predetermined and rater is forced to pick up between these parameters only then there is a pa paired comparison method an option one of the option was paired comparison method where each employee is compared with other employee on a one-on-one -on -one basis so n the formula for this is n into n minus 1 upon 2 where n is the total number of employees one time they have asked questions from pair comparison also okay so yeah moving on to next question organizational socialization is very important aspect of orientation when an employee first joins the organization he or she is made familiar with the organization that is introduction of new employee to the enterprise what it says which of the following is are not designed for socialization of managers so what do you mean by organizational socialization question is over this topic organizational socialization which is a part of your orientation so acquisition of work skills abilities yes employee is made aware of what is going to be his uh, work skills required for the work to be done adoption of appropriate role behavior what are the acceptable role behavior in the organization adjustment to the norms and value of the work group what is the fitment required adjustment required and the last one is filling a vacant position filling a vacant position is the goal of socialization or is it the goal of uh, orientation certainly no right so that's the only answer we have here organizational socialization is not is not filling a vacant position rest all options are a part of your organizational socialization yeah so, next question which is a very easy question which of the following is not a part of on the job take a note of not not a part of so sorry of the job so which of the following is on the job sensitivity training away from job transitional analysis 
apprenticeship and conference method in apprenticeship what happens like for skill based job like for example you have a carpenter at home and there's a junior who is accompanying that carpenter fellow and he is learning things on the job apprenticeship he may be paid a small amount of money for same so this is on the job rest rest all are off the job okay so yeah that is it okay one last question who coined the term collective bargaining collective bargaining deming is quality levin has given change management theories it is web sydney web and b trice web okay so that is it for today this this was part 1 and we continue this series tomorrow so all previous year questions we are going to discuss in this series thank you all and in the session Bye.